I recently finished writing a paper about the foundations of quantum mechanics. And when I was 90% done, I got stuck. So I copy and pasted my latte into ChatGPT and said, help. The first three solutions it offered were obvious nonsense. The fourth made the problem disappear. I like to think that I was still somehow necessary in that process, but for how much longer? It's not just me. In the past months, we've seen an invasion of physics research by AI, and I'm actually impressed. I might have to change my mind about large language models' inability to reason. Let's have a look. When I say that AI is invading physics research, I don't mean that physicists use custom-developed AI, formerly known as machine learning, to analyze data or improve models. This has been going on for decades and it isn't new. No, I mean they use the publicly available models ChatGPT Claude Grock to do their research from beginning to end. The most hands-on example I have comes from a startup called Extensity AI, and it hits close to home. They wrote a paper about finding evidence for quantum gravity and gravitational waves from black hole mergers. It's not a data analysis that we've seen before. They used GPT-5 and Codex to do the calculation and then iterated with neurosymbolic software to confirm this. They say that if one knows how to look for it, then gravitational wave signals from black holes can tell us whether there's really a singularity inside. The interesting part here isn't so much the content of the paper, but that someone is developing a workflow for doing this sort of thing. Though it's foreseeable that OpenAI and Google will soon do this as well, so I doubt this startup will go places. This isn't the only attempt, though. Liam Feeders from OpenAI has left the company to found a startup to develop an AI scientist. And they want to start with, guess what, physics. More specifically, with quantum mechanics lab tests, as his partner Ekin Chubuk explains here. Part of the LMs have gotten really good at logic and math. There is like verifiable rewards. What is like the next frontier in terms of, you know, inquiry after logic and math? I'd say it's physics. And then when you say physics, there are different energy scales. So there's astrophysics, studying galaxies, there's fusion, nuclear physics. But then there's the energy scale of physics that's more relevant to our life. And that's the quantum mechanics, like Schrodinger's equation. This is where, you know, biology happens, chemistry around us happens, materials happen. So we felt like our first lab should be basically probing that quantum mechanics energy scale. They raised an eye-popping $300 million to get this done. But others are skeptical that this is the route to scientific progress. The data scientist Bojan Tungus, for example, writes, I'm as excited as the next guy about creating an AI scientist, but I know all too well that for decades intelligence has not been the main bottleneck for creating better and more advanced scientific breakthroughs. The main bottleneck has been our ability to properly value and validate scientific output. And he has a point validating and validating scientific output on the theoretical as well as the experimental side could be done by an AI, but that'll be very difficult to monetize. It'll also be difficult to monetize incremental material science improvements so I wouldn't put any money into feeder startup either. Then there is the Google AI lab, which is busy developing what they call an AI co-scientist, of which they ran a trial earlier this year. We haven't seen many details, but the co-scientists' first two papers have now passed peer review and have been published. There's also the AI scientist from Saskana AI, which has now written its first paper that has passed peer review review. It's not just me who's noticed that large language models have crossed a threshold to where they actually save us time. Most telling are the occasional reports I see on X Twitter of scientists using large language models in their research. The physicist Steve Zhu, for example, writes, It's clear the models can read and understand, to a surprising degree, archive papers. They can combine ideas across multiple papers and make what seem to be original suggestions. We have a young AI researcher who writes, I just generated a 50-page academic 
academic thesis with examples. The paper's coherent. It might be a breakthrough paper. Or the Harvard professor David Sinclair who writes, My lab is using a novel AI system that makes non-intuitive scientific discoveries and writes up the paper plus figures with no human intervention easily at a PhD level. Somewhere a postdoc just felt a cold breeze and doesn't know why. When I finished my master work on quantum mechanics, I sent it to like 10 people and got a response from no one. That's academia for you. But there's always my good friend ChatGPT. Science is beautiful, let me show you. This is a star map of the night sky of last year's solar eclipse, which I watched in Canada. It's a lovely way to remember that event. And with Christmas coming up, maybe you can think of someone who would like a star map too? This star map comes from a company called Underlucky Stars, who've been sponsoring this video. The poster comes with the frame and the cover, and here you see it hanging on the wall. It really makes for a great wall decoration with this extra nerdy touch. And it's not like they just guess the positions of the stars. They calculate them and have them verified for accuracy by a NASA astronomer. You can choose the design for the poster from a variety of styles and also add your own text to it. And it looks in reality how it looks on their website. These posters are great memories of special moments and gifts, not just for science lovers. So if you're looking for Christmas gifts or maybe a gift to yourself, go and check out their website underluckystars.com and get your own personal star map. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.